Hi, my name is Peter Rudebeck and I'm an assistant professor at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And my lab is interested in the neurobiology of emotion and cognition. My colleague and I, Betsy Murray, review recent work that has changed our understanding of the functions of the orbitofrontal cortex, or OFC, seen here on an MRI of the brain. The OFC is heavily implicated in effective processing and decision making and likely plays a prominent role in many neuropsychiatric disorders. We set out to characterise the necessary functions of the OFC and then delve into its mechanisms. We discuss the information encoded by neurons in the OFC, the likely sources of these signals and how distinct parts of the OFC contribute to its functions. To do this we pose three questions. What does the OFC do? What information does OFC process? And how does the OFC influence behaviour? Two theories have dominated thinking about the necessary functions of the OFC. One holds that the OFC regulates emotion and enhances behavioural flexibility through inhibitory control. This is in part based on data from human patients who have damaged the OFC who show impulsive decision making. The other theory ascribes to OFC a role in signalling specific predictions about the outcomes that will follow a particular choice. Here when we say specific outcome, we mean a representation of the sensory qualities of the object or fluid, for instance, that might follow a particular choice. For instance, its smell, its taste, its appearance or its touch. Here we highlight recent research that supports the latter of these two ideas and suggests that deficits in inhibitory control that followed damage to the orbitofrontal cortex were actually caused by damage to white matter fibres near to the OFC and not the OFC itself. So, in answer to what does the OFC do, based on the most recent data, the OFC appears to be important for signalling the sensory specific qualities of outcomes that will follow a particular choice. With this clear idea of what the OFC does, we go on to explore its mechanisms. Studies where researchers recorded the activity in OFC found that many neurons in this area encode the specific outcomes that follow a choice, such as the amount of reward. But one question that we were interested in is how are these reward-related signals distributed in the OFC? Recent findings from human MRI studies suggest that more posterior portions of the OFC are important for signalling specific outcomes themselves, such as a memory of the sensory qualities of a candy, like an M&M, whereas more anterior portions of the OFC appear to be important for signalling the stimuli that are associated with those outcomes. For instance, a memory of the packaging in which you might find M&Ms. Direct recordings from the OFC also suggest a medial to lateral organisation of OFC function, whereas more lateral regions of OFC appear to be more evaluative signalling the different possibilities from which you can make a choice. More medial parts of OFC appear to be important for signalling the outcome of the choice that you're about to make. But of course, this doesn't tell us how these signals in OFC arise. One possibility is that information about specific outcomes is transmitted to the OFC from the amygdala, a part of the medial temporal lobe. Recently, we set out to explore this idea by recording the activity of neurons in the OFC both before and after removing input from the amygdala. After removing the input from the amygdala, we found there was a 30% reduction in the proportion of neurons in the OFC that signal specific outcomes. This is interesting because it tells us that the amygdala is a major source of specific outcome information in the OFC. But it also tells us that there must be many other parts of the brain that contribute to these specific outcome signals. Figuring out the different parts of the brain that contribute to these signals will be a really important avenue for future research. So, in answer to the question, what information does OFC process? The OFC processes different types of reward information related to specific outcomes. These signals are functionally organised in the OFC. And these signals arise through interactions with other parts of the brain, for instance, the amygdala. To influence behaviour, the OFC must interact with the parts of the brain that control the motor system. Here we review a number of different ways through which this could happen. One possibility is that specific outcome encoding in the OFC biases action plans in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and premotor cortex. Another possibility is that specific outcome encoding in the OFC biases activity within the striatum. Here we review a number of recent studies in mice that have shown that activation of the projection neurons from the OFC to the striatum biases encoding within the striatum 
and ultimately behavior. In summary, the OFC is important for predicting the sensory specific qualities or memory of an outcome that will follow a particular choice, which is why we refer to the OFC as an oracle of sorts.